the preface of france and england in north america part five count frontenac new france louis the fourteenth this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recorded by celine major france and england in north america part five count frontenac new france louis the fourteenth by francis parkman jr preface the events recounted in this book group themselves in the main about a single figure that of count frontenac the most remarkable man who ever represented the crown of france in the new world from strangely unpromising beginnings he grew with every emergency and rose equal to every crisis his whole career was one of conflict sometimes petty and personal sometimes of momentous consequence involving the question of national ascendancy on this continent now that this question is put at rest for ever it is hard to conceive the anxiety which it wakened in our forefathers but for one rooted error of french policy the future of the english-speaking races in america would have been more than endangered under the rule of frontenac occurred the first serious collision of the rival powers and the opening of the grand scheme of military occupation by which france strove to envelop and hold in check the industrial populations of the english colonies it was he who made that scheme possible in the old regime in canada i tried to show from what inherent causes this wilderness empire of the great monarch fell at last before a foe superior indeed in numbers but lacking all the forces that belong to a system of civil and military centralization the present volume will show how valiantly and for a time how successfully new france battled against a fate which her own organic fault made inevitable her history is a great and significant drama enacted among untamed forests with a distant gleam of courtly splendours and the regal pomp of versailles the authorities on which the book rests are drawn chiefly from the manuscript collections of the french government in the archive nationale the bibliothèque nationale and above all the vast repositories of the archives of the marine and colonies others are from canadian and american sources i have besides availed myself of the collection of french english and dutch documents published by the state of new york under the excellent editorship of dr o'callaghan and of the manuscript collections made in france by the governments of canada and of massachusetts a considerable number of books contemporary or nearly so with the events described also helped to throw light upon them and these have all been examined the citations in the margins represent but a small part of the authorities consulted this mass of material has been studied with extreme care and peculiar pains have been taken to secure accuracy of statement in the preface of the old regime i wrote some of the results here reached are of a character which i regret since they cannot be agreeable to persons for whom i have a very cordial regard the conclusions drawn from the facts may be matter of opinion but it will be remembered that the facts themselves can be overthrown only by overthrowing the evidence on which they rest or bringing forward counter evidence of equal or greater strength and neither task will be found an easy one the invitation implied in these words has not been accepted the old regime was met by vehement protest in some quarters but so far as i know none of the statements of fact contained in it have been attacked by evidence or even challenged the lines just quoted are equally applicable to this volume should there be occasion a collection of documentary proofs will be published more than sufficient to make good the positions taken meanwhile it will i think be clear to an impartial reader that the story is told not in the interest of any race or nationality but simply in that of historical truth when at the age of eighteen i formed the purpose of writing on french american history i meant at first to limit myself to the great contest which brought that history to a close it was by an afterthought that the plan was extended to cover the whole field so that the part of the work or series of works first conceived would following the sequence of events be the last executed as soon as the original scheme was formed i began to prepare for executing it by examining localities journeying in forests visiting indian tribes and collecting materials i have continued to collect them ever since so that the accumulation is now rather formidable and if it is to be used at all it had better be used at once therefore passing over for the present an intervening period of less decisive importance i propose to take as the next subject of this series montcalm and the fall of new france 
Boston, 1 January, 1877. End of Preface